things that the Lord has given me. He didn't owe it to me. But because he loved me. Because he cared for me. Because of his grace and his mercy. He allowed me to be blessed. And I will give him the highest praise. Shall we pray together? God, we thank you for our worship in this place on today. God, we have prayed prayers in your name. We sang songs in your name. We've given a tithe and offering in your name. But now, God, we need to hear from your word. So I pray, Lord, that you would take me out of self, wrap me up, tie me up, and tangle me up in your spirit, God, that what I should say will be pleasing in your sight. Last but not least, God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. You. For you are my Christ, my Redeemer, my Lord, and my Savior. But God, most of all, I found you to be my very best friend. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. amen and amen. Revelations chapter 2. Revelations chapter number 2. We want to look at verses 8 through 11. Revelations chapter number 2. This continuation of sermon series dealing with the book of Revelations, the seven letters to the churches. Revelations, the second chapter, verses 8 through 11. The New King James Version records it on this wise. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you're rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Jesus says, but be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to continue this series today, and I want to entitle this message, When the Going Gets Tough. When the Going Gets Tough. My brothers and sisters, if you have lived any amount of time as an adult, you understand that every day the sun does not shine. Every morning when you wake up, you don't wake up at your best. There are some days when you wake up and you want to stay in the bed. There are some days you get up, you pull yourself together, you go where you have to go, you do what you have to do, but it's a, it's a drag, it's a chore, it's a job just to make it through the day. You do the very best you can. You show up on Sunday morning. You worship the Lord. You give God praise. You pray. You give your tithes. You do everything that you think you're supposed to do in order to be that man or that woman, that boy or that girl that God has called, commanded, and commissioned you to be. But it seems like the more steps you take forward, it looks like the more steps you're taking back. In other words, what do you do when the going gets tough? In this context today, that very phrase, when the going gets tough, the going means the situation that you have to go through. Gets tough means it becomes difficult. The tough means people who are strong or enduring and, and, and get going means to become fully engaged. In other words, when you put all this together, it literally says when the situation becomes difficult, the strong will be engaged. Many times, my brothers and 
and sisters we often face and deal with in life that attempt that we we'll deal with things in life that attempt to stumble our faith and cause us to stop doing what God has commissioned and commanded us to do. Situations in life when a family member dies or one that you think should have still been here, God decides to remove them from this walk of life. When your family and your friends, even yourself, endure injustices in life, when you encounter health problems, when a loved one leaves, we see Christians whom we know love the Lord, but they encounter bad things in their lives. It leaves us asking the question, why do bad things happen to good people? When we encounter such situations in our life, we often wonder, does the Lord really care? What is the Lord's attitude toward the situations that I'm going through? And what does God feel about what I'm having to deal with? Moreover, we visit orphanages, we go to hospitals, and we see sick children, handicapped children. We see life's tragedies, children, so children taken, don't have their mental faculties dealing with the emotional trials and tribulations it act leaves us asking the question what do we do yeah. when the going gets tough well, my brothers and sisters, if we part it, if we part in Revelations chapter two, around verse number eight, you will come to understand that, that if we travel about forty miles from where we were last Sunday, forty miles north of Ephesus, we come to a place called Smyrna. Today, Smyrna is called Izmir. It's a leading city in modern Turkey because of its location and its beauty. Smyrna was known as the ornament of Asia around AD 26, uh, what happened was, the Bible says, a competition uh, was held to determine which city uh, would win the right to build the temple, the temple for Caesar to be worshipped. Uh, the story says that Smyrna won the contest. Uh, they took great pride uh, in their loyalty towards Rome, surrounding the hill that dominated uh, the city-state. One fire could find temples uh, in various pagan deities and over several Jews migrated to Smyrna and became because it became an important part of the business community. They bought and sold goods bound for Rome to the west of Persia and to the east. But because of the prevailing paganism, because of the citywide emperor worship, the Christians in Smyrna found themselves under pressure. Once a year, the citizens of Smyrna would publicly declare that Caesar is Lord. This is something that no true Christian would ever do. Therefore the believers, the believers of Jesus the Christ found themselves unpopular and continually criticized because to live in Smyrna meant that you were in the hotbed of Caesar worship and pagan sacrifice. It sounds like the world today when everybody is going and believing in all kinds of different doctrines. Those of us who are still professing and still proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord, we find ourselves under persecution because we're trying to live according to God's word. But the world would tell us to throw away the Bible. The world would tell us there is no God. The world would tell us there never was a Calvary. The world would tell us there never was a Jesus. And we ought to put away this foolish thinking of trying to call on the name of Jesus. Some people call on the name of Buddha. Some people call on the name of Confucius. Some people call on the name of Muhammad. Some people call on the name of number 45. But I call on the name of Jesus the Christ. Smyrna 
is one of only two churches in the book of Revelations for which the Lord has no words of rebuke. Smyrna was a good church. The only other church like Smyrna was the church of Philadelphia. The silence of the Lord is striking. Now, Minister Sherman, when you consider his harsh words for the churches around him, it is not because of any false sympathy that keeps the Lord from rebuking them. However, when you look, a deeper reality at, is at work here because the suffering that had made them strong, uh, the very suffering that made them be the good church and the strong church, uh, it had stripped them from everything except Jesus uh, himself. And here was a church uh, that was in trouble. Uh, their enemy clearly had an upper hand and see the oppressed believers Christ has nothing bad to say about them yes this letter lets us know something about this type of church and it lets us know something about who Jesus really is considering what we know about Jesus from his message to the suffering saints in Smyrna through these words we still find much encouragement and we still find much to encourage us in our struggles in life because there are going to be people in your life no matter how good you try to be no matter how right you try to live there is always somebody somewhere with a knife in their hand trying to stab you in the back but Dr. Mitchell when we look at this thing prophetically the church pictures the terrible persecution that was afflicted on those believers of Jesus the Christ when we look at this church practically and personally, there is a word for those of us who are trying to live according to the word of God. And let me give you a, let me pause and suggest to you that Jesus said in this life, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. I heard Jesus say, he said, don't you fear and don't you be afraid. Uh, of what's getting ready to happen to you. Uh, don't you worry uh, about the folk that's going to turn on you. Uh, don't you worry uh, about the folk that's going to talk about you. Uh, don't you worry uh, about the things that are going to happen to you. Uh, don't you worry, uh, but just be faithful. Uh, if you just hold on, uh, the Lord will work it out. Uh, if you hold on, uh, if you be faithful, uh, you will receive the crown. First thing, first thing you need to understand when the going gets tough, you need to know, beloved, that you're not in this thing by yourself. The first thing the Bible teaches us, number one, in this text, Jesus sees our tribulation. In verse number 10, the Bible says, verse 9 and 10, he says, I know your work. I know your tribulation. Jesus says, you can't see me, but I can see you. I know what you're going through. I see you in the midnight hour walking the floor. I see you wipe tears from your eyes. He says, I see your tribulation. That word tribulation in the Greek means pressure. It was used in that day to refer to crushing something under the weight of a heavy stone. The word tribulation comes from the Latin word tribulum. It refers to a stone, to the stone wheels that were used to crush the wheat to separate the kernel from the shell. The church at Smyrna was paying a price for their allegiance and obedience to Jesus. Let me pause and let somebody know you gotta pay the price when you wanna live for the Lord. You can't just live for the Lord and think every day the sun is going to shine. You got to pay the price if you're going to follow Jesus. When the sky 
falls around us, when all hope is lost, and when darkness surrounds us, the enemy closes in on us. But I still hear Jesus saying, I know your tribulation. Don't you fear, and don't you be afraid, because I'm standing right here by your side. This persecution did not come from the pagans in Smyrna, but the Bible tells me that they were suffering at the hand of the Jews. The Jews in Smyrna had teamed up with the idolaters in the city to try to come against the men and women of God. But by whatever necessary, Jesus says, you become a synagogue of Satan. Jesus says, you become a church that's ruled by the devil. And the accusers of blaspheming against the believers. Why did the people of Smyrna hate the believers so bad? Why when I try to show love, you turn your back on me? Why when I try to forgive you, you still don't like me? Why when I try to apologize, you fold your arms and you cross your legs? I'm a synagogue of Satan. The Jews and the pagans, they accused the believers of cannibalism because they celebrated the death, burial, and resurrection. The, believe, the Jews, they accused the believers of having of having a feast that did not mean anything. The Jews, they accused the believers because they hated their beliefs and they hated their practices. What are you saying, Pastor? We got some people in the church who don't like all this shouting. We got some people church who don't like your hallelujah and your amen. You can get mad all you want to because my hope is in the Lord and the Bible is telling me don't fear 
says, you think you're catching hell now. You think it's rough now. But the Bible says the devil is about to throw some of us into prison that we may be tested. Uh, that word test, it means that we're going to be tried. That means that we're going to be examined. It means that we got to go through it if we want to get to it. But Jesus says, don't you worry. Be faithful because I see your tribulation. But not only does he see our tribulation, he says, I see your tenacity. Even though the people were paying a heavy price for the faithful love and service to the Lord, the people did not back up from their profession. You can say what you want to say, but I ain't going to back down when you're talking about my Lord. They stayed the course. They demonstrated a faithful testimony to the glory of God. Remember Sermon, remember Smyrna was famous for their murder. It was only when the leaves of the tree was crushed that their fragrance would be released. Y'all missed it. It was only when the leaves were crushed that the fragrance would be released. Yeah, the people were being crushed under the pressure of persecution. They were releasing, but they were releasing a fragrance of love. I'm faithful to Jesus. I may be crushed, but the Lord is releasing a fragrance of love. You might talk about me, but I'm still going to love you anyway. Jesus sent seven letters to seven different churches. Five of the churches received the word of rebuke. But only one of the churches received the commendation from the Lord. The Lord had been observing their walk and he was pleased with their tenacity. He said, I see what you're going through. I know your works. I know how you've been treated. Don't you worry. I got it all under control. You just keep on you just keep on spraying out love. You just keep on giving out peace. You just keep on preaching encouragement. Because the Lord says, I see what you're going through. But I'm still pleased with how you're working. I'm still pleased with how you're praying. I'm still pleased with how you're singing. I'm still pleased with how you're ushering. I'm still pleased with how you're taking care of the sick. I see your tribulation, but I see your tenacity. When the going gets tough, you gotta keep on moving. The Lord told me, I see what you're going through. But you gotta keep on, keep it on in the spirit of the Lord. I'm out of here. But the Bible says, I see your tribulation, I see your tenacity. But don't you worry and don't you fear. You stand tall in the word of God. Don't you remember? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded upon the seas and he has established upon the waters. Who shall 
is tough. You gotta hold on to the word of God. Paul said, the God who made us, he knows my limits, and he will never put more on me than I can bear. Jesus said. Yeah! 
Good morning. 
But the word of the Lord will stand forever. You can try to refute the Bible. You can try to disprove it. But when the going gets tough, Jesus told the church, do not fear and stay faithful. Everything can be crumbling around you. Do not fear and stay faithful. The sky can fall on you. Do not fear but stay faithful. Fret not yourself. The evil doers. God will take care of you. Don't you fear Those of the church who open the field today. 